that which you are, your true self, you love it. And whatever you do, you do for your own happiness. To find it, to know, to cherish it is your basic urge. Since time immemorial, you loved yourself, but never wisely. Use your body and mind wisely in the service of the self, that is all. Be true to your own self. Love yourself absolutely. Do not pretend that you love others as yourself, unless you have realized them as one with yourself. You cannot love them. Don't pretend to be what you are not. Don't refuse to be what you are. Your love of others is the result of self-knowledge, not its cause. Without self-realization, no virtue is genuine. When you know, beyond all doubting, that the same life flows through all that is, and you are that life, you will love all naturally and spontaneously. When you realize the depth and fullness of your love of yourself, you know that every living thing in the entire universe are included in your affection. But when you look at anything as separate from you, you cannot love it, for you are afraid of it. Alienation causes fear, and fear deepens alienation. It's a vicious circle. Only self-realization can break it. Go for it, resolutely. Naturally serene, seamless like space, embodying wholeness, the unity of ever fresh awareness and its field, unchanging, impartial, not biased towards being or non being. I salute the supreme universal creativity. Here I have elucidated. For the sake of future generations, the meaning of the supreme way of life. This approach to life which comes from the spontaneously perfect universal creativity is the way to directly experience the pure fact of awareness that is at the very heart of all experiences. This approach is not a gradual process of self-development. With it, you actually wake up to what is right now. The valley spirit never dies. It is the woman, primal mother. Her gateway is the root of heaven and earth. It is like a veil, barely seen. Use it. It will never fail. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The named is the mother of ten thousand things. Ever desireless, one can see the mystery ever desiring, one can see the manifestations. These two spring from the same source, but differ in name. This appears as darkness, darkness within darkness, the gate to all mystery. Give up learning and put an end to your troubles. Is there a difference between yes and no? Is there a difference between good and evil? Must I fear what others fear? What nonsense. Other people are contented, enjoying the sacrificial feast of the ox. In spring, some go to the park and climb the terrace. But I alone am drifting, not knowing where I am. Like a newborn babe, before it learns to smile, I'm alone without a place to go. Others have more than they need, but I alone have nothing. I am a fool, 
Hey, yes, I'm confused. Other men are clear and bright. I alone am dim and weak. Other men are sharp and clever. I alone am dull and stupid. I drift like the waves of the sea, without direction, like the restless wind. Everyone else is busy, but I alone am aimless and depressed. I'm different. I'm nourished by the Great Mother. This knowledge of truth, of Atman, of the self, makes a person who is eloquent, wise and vigorous, mute, inert and inactive. Hence it is shunned by those who wish to enjoy the world. You are not the body, nor is the body yours. You are neither the enjoyer nor the doer. You are pure intelligence itself, the eternal witness and the indifferent onlooker. So therefore move about happily. Passion and aversion are qualities of mind. They're not yours. Mind is never yours. You are free from desires and thoughts. You are intelligence itself and free from fluctuations. So therefore, move about happily. <laughs>